morning. Ah. Good morning, everybody. It's time to get started. I know we're, we're all very excited to be here in beautiful Salt Lake City in the snow. I'm Jennifer Knox. I'm a medical oncologist uh, who treats uh, uh, hepatobiliary cancers in the Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto, and I've been uh, involved in this, this area of, of cancer and research my entire career. Um, and so it's, it's wonderful to be, have this opportunity to chair a meeting like this. I think if you've never been to this before, uh, you'll learn quite quickly this is a very unique uh, uh, type of conference uh, among just about anything to do with cancer and cancer care and cancer uh, research. It's unique because, one, the agenda is amazing, but two, it's the, it's the interaction that we build of bringing together so many different kinds of experts in the field, scientists, clinicians, but also patients, caregivers, uh, pharma support, sponsors, every, and, and so much more, volunteers, and, uh, and in, an, in a venue in which people feel safe and comfortable to talk and dialogue. And of course, then the most important uh, outcome of such a meeting is real exchange of ideas, uh, improving the potential for uh, research and collaboration in cholangiocarcinoma. And every year I've ever been here, I've come away uh, refreshed, more determined to work hard on this disease than ever before, uh, and with amazing, um, you know, new, new networking and collaborations. And I'm really pleased to say that the, the uh, conference just keeps getting more and more successful because like anything in life, when, you're, when you do something well, word gets out. And so this is the sixth annual uh, cholangiocarcinoma uh, meeting. And I understand that more than 40 states of the US are represented, 19 countries internationally, which is pretty amazing. There are just shy of 500 um, people registered for this meeting. And there is also a live streaming that occurs. And the expectation is this year, over 1,000 people will join in on the live streaming as well. And this year, more so than any other year, we have uh, over 27 uh, sponsors coming from pharma, which is a huge uh, 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 innovation to bring this in and to, and to uh, uh, sponsor and to help facilitate uh, this meeting as well. Um, Today, as you know, this is a day that's been set up largely for uh, patients and their caregivers uh, discussions, although I think clinicians will learn a lot from today as well. And then the next two days are a little more focused on the uh, clinical and scientific discussion, but also with the, the patient uh, caregiver input. Um, I might just point out a couple of things on the schedule today, which um, may be a bit new to you. Um, we have some very interesting lectures this morning, and of course, throughout this entire meeting, we want people to uh, engage and ask questions, in the, and we have time allowed after each presentation for that. I might just draw your attention to the uh, clinical poster session at 2.30. For those of you who may not know, uh, posters are the way um, researchers and clinicians try to show their work, uh, because not everybody has time to give a presentation at a meeting. And at scientific meetings, this is a way for people to go and talk to the, uh, the people involved in the study and ask questions and dialogue. So the, the poster session that's set up today, uh, go to it and ask questions and, and dialogue because there's probably a little more room today than tomorrow when everybody arrives uh, for the scientific session. And, it, and you might actually really enjoy uh, having those kinds of one-on-one -on -one discussions. Uh, my co-chair, uh, Dr. Lewis Roberts, is going to add to my introductions. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Knox. And um, my name is Lewis Roberts. Um, I'm a hepatologist, which means I take care of people with liver diseases. And my main area of focus uh, in my work at the Mayo Clinic is on liver and biliary tract cancers. 
And every time I come to this meeting, I feel like I came home in more than one way. Um, because some of you know that um, if just a few years after I had decided to focus my career um, professionally on liver and biliary tract cancers, my mother was diagnosed with um, uh, cholangiocarcinoma. And so I had the sort of what ironic, but also I think unique perspective of um, helping as my colleagues made the decisions about her care, but also then personally helping with changing her biliary tubes and when she had a Whipple procedure and had a drain, being the person who helped her with, with taking care of her drain. So I feel somewhat, in, in some ways, uniquely at home at, at, at this meeting that I, I, I can see it from the perspective of many of you who are patients and caregivers, as well as from the perspective of someone who is very motivated um, to try to reduce the, the burden of this um, disease. Um, I think what you'll see at this meeting is really the result of lots of work by um, Stacy, um, the foundation, and the volunteers that um, take part in the work of the foundation, many of whom are here. And I just wanted to start by saying thank you to this group of people and all the work that you've done to help make not just this meeting, but the whole movement of improving care for patients with, um, with cholangiocarcinoma um, better. Partic <laughs> Particularly, I wanted to recognize the National Institutes of Health. Um, we'll be very fortunate on Friday to have Dr. Chris Austin, who directs the Center for Advancing Translational Sciences. So this is a center at NIH that focuses on moving, um, moving basic science discoveries through to the clinic. And so all the work that's being done in basic research laboratories, enhancing um, the application of this work to patients and to patient care. And I think we're really fortunate that he agreed to speak. He'll, he is unable to be here himself, will be live streamed in, but I think that will be a highlight for us. But not just, they're not just speaking, but for the last several years, NIH has actually supported this meeting with a grant to support the meeting. And I think we need to thank um, them for that as well. The other institute, thank you. The other organization of the government which supports this meeting and has now, and this is a record for the fourth consecutive year, and I understand that this is the first time that this has happened with any organization of this kind, the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI. This will be the fourth year that PCORI has supported this meeting, in part to allow patients and caregivers to attend this meeting. So again, I think kudos to our organizing team, and thanks to PCORI for this work. So our particular interest as we were planning this meeting also was the idea of collaboration. And collaboration is necessary to move the field forward. We've, also, we've already seen that this meeting is the result of lots of collaboration, but we want particularly to encourage you to be thinking as you listen to the talks, as you meet people, how can we collaborate together to eliminate the burden of illness and death from this disease? And I'd like you to, we, we really, we asked each of the speakers as they, as they were preparing their talks to think collaboration, to think about asking at the end of their talks in ways that, about ways that we can collaborate together. And we'd like you all to challenge us as speakers, as scientists, um, as advocates. Um, let's challenge each other with ways that we can collaborate even better to eliminate um, this disease. That's all I have to say, and thanks so much again for attending, and we're looking forward for a real, to a really um, successful meeting. Thank you.